Here's your Money Briefing for Tuesday, March 14th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. People with money tied up in Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank that failed over the weekend breathed a sigh of relief when the government announced that their cash holdings would be protected by the FDIC. So how does the FDIC work, and how would it protect you if you had cash at a bank that failed? Wall Street Journal personal finance reporter Amani Moise is here to explain. Amani, thank you for being with us. Happy to be here. So, Amani, we've heard a lot about the FDIC in the past few days, and a lot of people probably see signage for it when they go to their bank. What is the FDIC and what's its role? So FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which was created in the 1930s after the Great Depression to restore public faith in the banking system after a lot of Americans lost their life savings in a series of bank failures. So essentially, it's the government guaranteeing that you're going to get your money back if a bank fails. All right. And how much of people's deposits are insured? So the standard insurance that comes with any bank is $250,000 per depositor per bank. And if you're a married couple with a joint account, then each individual owner gets another $250,000. So that joint account is covered for up to $500,000. All right. You know, that's a good cushion for a lot of people who probably have a lot less than a quarter million dollars in the bank. But what if your bank goes under, like we saw with Silicon Valley Bank and a few others, What does that look like for depositors, even if they have that insurance policy in place? So when a bank fails, and really what that means is that a bank does not have enough money on hand to repay all of its obligations or give money back to depositors, what that means is that the government will take it over. And once the government determines that a bank has failed and takes it over, you can't touch your deposits until the government kind of finishes taking stock and figures out exactly how much assets that bank has and with what priority people need to be repaid. So once your bank fails, there is going to be a waiting period where you're trying to understand what the government is going to do. And once that's done, then you'll be able to withdraw funds up to the insured limit. It's also important to understand what isn't covered by the FDIC. What that agency is really created for is to protect cash deposits. So if you have investments like stocks, bonds, those aren't typically covered by FDIC insurance. But if you have your money in a brokerage, that's very likely covered by another kind of insurance called the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. And though I mentioned bonds aren't covered by FDIC and U.S. Treasury bonds aren't either. However, if you trust the U.S. government enough to insure your cash, then you should also trust them enough to repay your debt. They're backed by the same creditor effectively. Okay, but let's say you've done well enough for yourself that you have a single account with more than $250,000 that you've deposited. Is there any way to extend FDIC coverage so you reduce the chance of losing money? Well, first off, congratulations. As you say, you're clearly doing well for yourself. And it's fairly simple to increase the amount of coverage that you have. The most obvious way to do it is to open multiple accounts. There's no limit on the amount of accounts that a single person could have. And they're each covered for that 250000 as long as they're at different banks. The other way to increase coverage is to have both an individual and a joint account, because as I mentioned earlier, those are insured separately. Also, if you have a family with some minors, you could set up custodial accounts in your children's names, and each of those accounts would have another $250,000 worth of coverage. Wow. Um, Multiple accounts, that can be a handful to follow to keep track of all your balances. The FDIC actually has a calculator to help you estimate your total coverage because it can be tough to keep track of multiple accounts and stay on top of all of the different statements. The easiest way to do this is to have your bank do it for you. And they do that through a method called deposit swapping. So how that works is you go to one bank with a large deposit, but say that you want to participate in a network to have it all covered by FDIC insurance. What that bank then does is split up that large deposit into amounts that are below the limit and separates them at different banks. That way you get the benefit of having the coverage of multiple banks, but you're still only dealing with one bank, one monthly statement, or one monthly statement per product that you end up using. All right, that's Wall Street Journal personal finance reporter Amani Moiz. Amani, it's great having you with us. Thanks for having me. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal.